All right, we're going to take a look at lecture example number seven. And the question asks us to calculate delta H for a reaction. Oh, that's what it asks us for. That's what we're going to be trying to find. Now, delta H's of reactions are usually you. The, the label, the unit label on those is kilojoules per mole. So we're going to have a measurement of how much energy is produced, and we're going to compare that to how much of the limiting reactant was consumed. In number seven, the reaction is the decomposition, or I guess dissociation, of lead to nitrate. So the reaction is, sorry, my marker. PbNO32 dissociating into Pb2 plus and two nitrate ions. In the problem, it says that 13.7 grams of the reactant decompose or dissociate. Uh, the medium, so this occurs in water inside of a calorimeter, right? So you can imagine it. We've done something like this in lab, right? You take something like a coffee cup. You've got water in there. You drop stuff in there and the temperature of that water is going to change as a result of the chemical process going on inside of that water. So the water is there, it serves two functions. The water is the medium through which the chemical reaction can occur, but the water is also there as an energy transfer medium. So if the reaction would be exothermic, the water is gonna absorb that energy that's produced, temperature of the water is gonna rise. If the reaction would be endothermic, the water supplies energy from which the reaction can pull, and so as the reaction pulls that energy in, the temperature of the water surrounding it inside the calorimeter will decrease. In this reaction, it says that the water inside of there, all right, so the mass of that water, there's 85.0 grams of water, and that while the reaction occurs, the water drops from 23.4 degrees Celsius down to 19.7 degrees Celsius. All right. So we know that we react 13.7 grams of lead to nitrate. Since it's a decomposition or dissociation reaction, there's only one reactant, so that has to be our limiting reactant. So my 13.7 grams, I am going to convert to moles. For the energy component of my delta H, I need to somehow figure out how much energy was involved with this process, and that's what the water serves for. So however much energy was absorbed or released by this reaction, the, the water is going to have the mere response to it. And I can tell since the water decreased in temperature, the water was losing energy, so this reaction must have absorbed energy in the process. So we would call this an endothermic reaction. All right now just how much energy did it absorb? Well I figure out how much energy was lost by the water and that's how much energy must have been absorbed by the chemical reaction. So in order to determine how much energy was pulled out of the water we're going to use the equation so S equals Q over M times delta T, where S equals the specific heat, all right, and for water, that's a known value, the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. 
change in temperature. Well, we went from 23.4 degrees down to 19.7. So that would be a, what, 3.7, negative 3.7 degrees Celsius change in temp. And the mass, the M, was 85 grams of water. So I need Q here. So I'm gonna rearrange that formula. If I put this over one and I cross multiply that, I end up with Q equals S times M times delta T. And so if I wanna calculate that Q value, I'll take my S, my M, and my delta T and multiply them together and I will get my Q value. I'll find the amount of energy that the water lost to this reaction. Q is gonna equal 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times 85.0 grams times negative 3.7 degrees Celsius. Then, I included the labels there so we can see what's the label on Q gonna be? How many joules will it be? So, actually let's, right, so it's written as joules per gram degree Celsius. So grams on the bottom of this fraction, so grams divides away, degrees Celsius divides away. So the unit on Q is gonna be joules. 4.18 times 85 times negative 3.7. We get negative 1,314, uh, 15 joules. Now that's from the water's perspective. So the water lost 1,315 joules. Where did it go? It was absorbed by this reaction. So from the reaction's point of view, that energy value would be a positive. Also, it asks for it in kilojoules. So we are going to need to convert joules to kilojoules. It's one kilojoule per thousand joules. So that means 1.315 kilojoules. And then since water to reaction, I'm gonna switch that sign and go ahead and call it positive 1.315 kilojoules. All right, now it's time to, oh wait, hold on. We didn't convert for moles, right? We still have 13.7 grams of reactant. So I need to times one mole of lead to nitrate for every, so what's lead is 207.2, uh, nitrate is like 62 grams, and there's two of them, so that'd be 62 plus 62 plus 207.2, and so we're looking at 331.2 grams of lead to nitrate per mole. So 13.7, that's gonna equal 0 0.04136 moles. Okay, now we can put our two pieces together. We found our kilojoules, we found our moles. Delta H for the reaction is equal to still on the screen, positive 1.315 kilojoules per 0 0.04136 moles. And so the delta H for this reaction, I would say is positive 0.04136 
31.8 kilojoules per mole. And then going back, looking at the original problem, in terms of rounding for sig figs, 13.7, 85.0, both the temperatures were three sig figs. So I would report that as delta H equals positive 31.8 kilojoules per mole.